Hey YouTube. So that last video, we took this engine and uh, oh, we got it running. Well, today we're gonna make it where it doesn't run right now, but we're gonna tear into it. We're gonna address a few things. Um, I had a question from a viewer, David Terry, and it was a good question. And he asked, how does one of these little engines know when to hit and when to miss? So I told him that we'd go into it a little bit further. And if you guys have already seen it, well, it's not going to be exciting for you. But if you're kind of curious, well, we'll show you. Let me get this flywheel off. I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, well, I've got you guys pulled in a little bit closer. Uh, we've got this loose. And we've covered this before. But this is a, a collar. And they're tapered. So when you tighten down these screws, it pushes in on this wedge and expands this part of the collar in and this part of the collar out and that holds onto the crankshaft it makes it very nice very easy to remove them as long as somebody already hasn't rounded the screws out these things are fantastic so let's take a look at our governor assembly here so these are our fly weights right here that you can see moving in and out and you can see that they act on this lockout linkage here so when this engine's running at speed these weights want to fly out and they will hold this exhaust valve open I'm going to use my finger to you know, show that these are held out so right now there's no compression on this engine at all because our exhaust valve is held open and when our speed slows down if you watch this weight it dropped in right now it has slowed down and it allows our exhaust valve to close you hear that noise that was drawing in a charge of air and fuel now we're coming up on compression it fires and spins this at higher speeds again so once it's back up to speed, our fly weights fly out and it holds our exhaust valve open. And it will sit there and, and coast like that until once again it reduces its speed and centrifugal force doesn't hold these weights out. It allows our exhaust lockout to go shut again and our exhaust valve to shut. Once again with our compression, power, intake, compression our power stroke and our exhaust so well dave i hope that uh might clear things up a little bit for you but and uh this is just something that you know you guys probably have heard the saying you know balls to the walls or balls out well that comes from steam engines but it's about the same principle when these are all the way out you know parallel with the wall that means that engine's running as fast as it can it's governed to run at so when you hear somebody say well it's running balls out or balls to the walls that's where this saying comes from so all right let me get this other flywheel off we'll pull you guys back out we'll pull our crank out of here take a look at our rod bearing all right we got both of our flywheels off we're gonna pull our connecting rod off i'm sorry if i get my hands in your way but uh well there's a whole lot of room in here Especially when I got the camera this close so you guys can almost see what the heck's going on. I'm not sure what they use for a, a bearing in here, so we're going to find out together. Okay, we got our rod cap all loosened up. Let's take it off. There is no bearing. It's a aluminum on steel i would assume this to be aluminum it may be some form of an alloy but that's what we've got for our big end of our roll this ahead get our piston out of the way there all right let me get our uh, main caps off here pull our crank okay we've got our main caps loose we're going to make a mark right here so we know which side is which 
and uh, we'll put one on here so we don't confuse them and get them turned around it's not going to make a whole lot of difference because of what we're going to be doing but we'll show you guys anyhow so we'll get these off set them off to the side and you saw that we had these real nice oil cups on here we'll get this in here off we'll get our crank out of the way And you can see that these bushings are drilled to let our oil in here. So they actually do do something. So a nice crank, but it is not uh, milled for counterbalancing the rod. That's probably something we're going to address. But all right, let's get him out of the way. Now oh, then, let's get a hold of our piston. I'll pull him all the way back, pull him clear through the back side here, get a look at it. As you can see, we just have, well, a rubber oat ring. And I don't even believe this is that flora gel material. This looks like Viton. Our wrist pin is captured, so that's a good thing. All right, let me put our. Uh, rod cap back on and tear into our lockout mechanism okay, are you guys close enough to see what's happening here watch for flying parts okay i need all the help i can get on this one so it appears that there's really not a whole lot holding this onto there so as you can see all this works evenly we do have kind of a a tight spot on our ramp to open that it's something else we're gonna address let me get this uh, spring mount right here off that'll allow us and you know, that'll just lift right off of there let me get those little guys out of the road we'll take this off and we'll see what kind of a spring we've got holding that under there that spring tension right there is what's gonna well, between that spring weight, the spring tension on this, and the weight of these brass flyweights, that will uh, dictate the speed of this engine. So, let me get these off. We've got our screws loose here. Let's see what's holding this thing in there. Let's see if we can't work him out. Stainless steel screws with a magnetic screwdriver doesn't work too well, does it? Okay, let's get this picked up off of here. There you go. You guys see that spring? That's what forces against our lockout mechanism here and our fly weights on our governor so we're going to be doing some work to that guy if we're going to slow this down we got our cam gear off of here you can see how this how this works together when these fly out you guys see that that's what acts on that rod that we just took off so we've got a hollow shaft here. That's what our push rod rides inside of and then our cam rides on the outside. So very nice setup on that. I like that. Okay, we'll set him off to the side. Get our screws back out of the way. And let's get this uh, push rod out of here. And get that apart. Okay guys, we've got all of our hardware attached, or unattached, so now we can pull this off. We're going to look at the back side of this linkage here, and it is rounded over, but we do have that drag when it's riding up on the cam, so that's something else we're going to address. Um, let me show you something that 
I I don't imagine how this was ever done or that these were even available because when I seen them it blew my mind but it may turn into why did I start this or it may turn into I'm so happy I did this so we've got our you know our all here our o-ring pick let me show you guys this you see that on the back side there this is a ball bearing and it is so small but my intention is, is to take one of those little ball bearings we're gonna mill a slot in here drill and tap this and then we're gonna mount one of these little ball bearings well, we're gonna try to mount one of these little ball bearings in there so then we have you know roller action on our cam I'm not sure that it's gonna help a whole lot but I'm sure that the cam will enjoy it and it'll live longer so let's take a look at this right here because just from looking at it it does look like it's made off center so we can adjust our cam and crank gear mesh loosen that up and we're gonna see if it's off center or if it's just a, an illusion it does turn just a little bit and it does appear to want to uh, you know it's an eccentric the way it's machined so that would allow us to adjust our cam and crank gear mesh I think we're gonna leave our ignition alone for the time being um, I've had a few good suggestions about how to pack all of our ignition underneath of here and we're gonna check that out another thought I had was uh, instead of it activating this have it activate a, a, a piezo ignition system so we won't need batteries at all but I'm not sure about that but, all right let's get our cylinder head off of here get our fuel tank and everything apart and we'll be pretty much left with a bare block we'll get everything cleaned up dialed in and uh, start addressing some issues probably lap our valves even though they don't need it and start reassembly all right well we've got our cylinder head all unbolted take the last couple threads off of this guy down here We can see inside of our cylinder head. Put him out of the road. We'll look down in our bore here, and we do have an O-ring that they're using for a, a cylinder head gasket. I'm not sure this here appears to be a well, partially wet sleeve. It's wet on the top, but I don't think there's a water jacket on the bottom. I could be mistaken. But I see no reason to pull our cylinder liner out of our block. So, all right, guys. Well, hey, you got to see us tear it down. You got to see well, these little itty bitty bearings here. And uh, for our main bearings, we're going to be changing those over too. We're going to put uh, we're going to put ball bearings in our mains. There's probably nothing wrong with these sleeves, but we'll put these ball bearings in it. And we'll pull the seals out of the inside so we can still use our oil. And uh, yeah, we'll leave our seals on the outside so these ball bearings are constantly riding into a pool of oil. So, all right, guys. Well, that might have been a short one. Hopefully, you guys thought it was informative or at least a little bit exciting. But uh, when we come back. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably sit out here and start working on our push rod that goes here and get our bearing mounted in there and yeah so hey once again thanks guys if you have any questions on these ask um if i have an answer i'll give you one and if you guys want to see something well hell, we'll tear it apart and we'll take a look so all right thanks again guys you're fantastic i'll see you in another day or two bye hey guys in that first video when i said oh well, you know, these engines, no, they're not perfect, and you might own two of them, but you won't make them the same. You got to make them your own. Well, yeah. All right. Well, let's 
kind of a sneak peek but we've smoothed all the casting lines and trued up all of our surfaces here 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 and uh yeah so well guess what guys this is going to be a different color so all right well thought i'd show you guys this so